I should have just kept the old one. What's up, everybody? Hello, Gun Nation. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Moto. All right. Uh, right now we've got uh, the crazy Scotsman, Logan White, Craig Fatla, da, 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 Philip Harper. Big group. I'm sure people will start shuffling in, or they won't be. <laughs> Either way. Hey, uh, the Glock Gen 5 just came out. Uh, Logan is asking if anybody's heard about that yet. No, I did not know that. Logan, that's awesome, dude. G-Man, CWB. G-Man, I have one right here. Big, big, big Taddy, Paradox. It's got Paradox in the house. <laughs> paradox has been making a killing, man. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of mad, to be honest with you. Mad yeah, and yeah. happy. Happy he's getting a killing and mad that I'm not. That's right. He is loading up on some freaking yantas. He's going to open up a tire store. <laughs> no. uh, we've got uh, Rich Al, in all seriousness, Gerald, Swinger 70. Swinger. Uh, what's going on, Shep? Uh, Danny B. Fishing. Uh, good old Danny B. Fishing. How are you? They are, they are rightfully. <laughs> God, good push. Good push. Lovely. Just ate dinner. <laughs> I'll tell you. Not much, Logan. How are you, sir? <laughs> oh, Gerald's wondering it. Yeah, he, Gerald didn't even know about the Glock Gen uh, Five. Gerald, that was right false. here. That that was Gen false Five Glock. Information. False information. There is no Gen Five. Right here, Gen Five. It comes with the uh, the factory flag Cerakote. This is Gen Five Cerakote. <laughs> right, right. Makes the gun well, invisible. Just wants to talk about the elephant in the room. What's the elephant in the room? I am the elephant in the room. Uh, Dave Ports, uh, NC Civil War. What what is the elephant is is what is the elephant in the room? Uh, he says Big J and the do maximum not or maximum nine. Is is that really an elephant in the room? I guess that's one well, ugly ass elephant. That's for sure. It's not an elephant. It's a freaking boat or. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about it's about as ugly as it gets. I, I flipper. I tell you what, in 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 all seriousness, that trigger is horrific. It is horrible. Yeah, uh, I've heard similar feedback. Um, hello, I carry my revolver in single action. Good to see you. Um, a, a lot of the guys got to sample a Maxim from Centerfire Shooting Sports, and uh, they were saying the exact same thing. It uh, it's it's an awkward design, and the it's basically like a like a bad version of a Glock with a silencer sort of duct taped around uh, the, the end of it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. It's just, it's not, yeah. it's great an idea. I love the idea of it, but, uh, but it's just kind of, kind of half-assed sort of. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, whoa. It's definitely going to, uh, people are going to have to get used to that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Keenan, what's going on, brother? Uh, all right, so we've got a pretty good crowd coming in. What uh, Abaddon? What's going on? It's been a couple weeks since we've seen you. Good to see you. Uh, uh, we're back in Florida. Uh, yeah, well, that's exactly right. Uh, he's had his hands full for sure. Uh, Mateo, good to see you. Young Guns, what's going on? Um, so, uh, so we've got several different uh, things to talk about this evening, and then of course uh, we'll be talking about all of your. Uh, Gun-related uh, ideas, witty comments, all that kind of good stuff. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, who wants to kick things off? It's your show. I got, I got, I got something I want to bring up. <laughs> you. you know what? This is going to be an immediate thumbs down, and probably uh, everybody's going to get pissed. But I, I don't care anymore. I've had it. So the other day, I was watching this video of a YouTuber who's got. I think 700 plus thousand subscribers um, basically talking about wanting to raise money because his channel has to be self-sufficient. And so he was, you know, and, and again, whether or not this was in jest or not, I don't know, but he was talking about this idea, this crazy idea about charging potentially people a dollar a video and making everything private so that only uh, Patreon people can, you know, can watch it. And uh, the whole time I watched the video, the only thing I kept saying to myself was, wait a second, I'm sitting at work right now watching this. So yeah, I know I should be working, but, and the person's on a boat. 
looking like he's going on a nice day for fishing. So I, I don't know, guys, man, that, that kind of just drive me, drove me insane that day. I mean, when is enough enough? Like, seriously, that's it. End of rant. Well, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's interesting. And of course, um, all, all of us, all of us small channels don't necessarily have the, um, have the appreciation of some of the volume that uh, bigger channels have seen over the years. Um, so, so we can't necessarily, um, uh, put our finger on what, the, what they're potentially experiencing this year. Um, if there's really a drop in, uh, in, in money and that sort of thing. But, uh, but I think, I think there comes a point where, where, where there's too much and, you know, a dollar video and some of those types of things, uh, I don't understand very much. I can't relate to that. And I couldn't ask anybody to do that for me. I wouldn't pay a dollar a video for my own videos. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah, but if you think about it, I mean, if the person has 70, just say 70,000 viewers watch it, that's $70,000. Right. And that's, I we're mean, talking a month. We're not even talking a year. That's, that's 70 grand a that's, month. Yeah, but that's not, that's just for one video. Right. 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 That's yeah. What I mean, if he does some, a video a week? At some point, I think somebody needs to just say, you know, I, I think we're kind of passing the threshold between people who want to provide decent content. And I'm not saying he doesn't. I actually enjoy his channel. He has a lot of good things to say after, you know, 35 minutes. But at the same time, I mean, when are we passing that threshold between wanting to provide content and then being greedy? That's I, I don't know. You know, um, I, I, I just don't get it. So um, I carry my revolver in single action, said nothing wrong with Patreon. And I agree, there's nothing wrong with it. And, and it's in the idea. And if people want to freely support something that they enjoy, absolutely, 100%. I'm, I'm totally behind that. I wouldn't do it personally. I don't think I could ask for that. But but if other people want to do it and they want to willingly pay for it, totally fine. Uh, but I think they're, they're, uh, to me, there's a little bit of a, a line between uh, you know good spirit and taking things too far. Yeah, we got Robin. We got the humble marksman, CWB. Sorry if I missed anybody. No, I think uh, I think that's pretty much everybody. And then yeah, uh, just Rich forty one fifty uh, just made a point saying that uh, these folks are just greedy bastardos and saying that AdSense is paying as much as ever. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I looked at mine today, and and I haven't lost anything. I mean, I don't. I haven't really made anything, but <laughs> at the same time, I haven't. I, I've seen it go up. I haven't seen it go down. So I don't really know what the um, the big deal is. I guess people who are making like a hundred thousand dollars a year off this are now making eighty thousand a year. But I mean, they should be thank thankful they're making that. You know. Well, that's exactly right. YouTube doesn't have to pay anybody anything. At the end of the day, it's uh, that is that is totally their um, their right uh, to do whatever. And uh, and and I agree with you. I mean, I, you know, I've only got this year to gauge, but uh, but I I haven't noticed any much of a fluctuation. We had a fluctuation, I think, back in April. Uh, mm -hmm. Wanted around April when they were turning things and turning things off and on. But uh, but that that's really been the only one that I've noticed. Right. Yeah. So. All right. Do you uh, want to get to your get to the topics? Yeah, let's skip this. Let's get rid of this one. Yeah. Um, so, we've got a couple of things, and and I don't know how many of you guys have heard uh, about this. This came across, I think, this weekend. It might have been, I, I think, Saturday, um, and I don't remember if it was the firearm blog or or uh, which or gun collective, whatever it was, but they were reporting that Amazon uh, had a little. A uh, little piece of equipment that had uh, Glock on the back of it, although it was clear that it was not factory Glock. It was some sort of aftermarket thing, and um, and I think it was supposed to be marketed towards maybe airsoft pistols, that sort of thing. But it's a device you plug on to the back of your uh, of your Glock, and I think it might even take the the uh, place of the back plate. And basically, it turns your semi-automatic uh, Glock into a fully automatic Glock. And uh, there was a lot of theory and speculation about that as to whether uh, Amazon was freely and willingly allowing this product to come on and be in cahoots with uh, the ATF and any other government organizations trying to, to, to go after people to buy this product to have it shipped to their house. Because of course, if it makes a real gun automatic, um, that's obviously in violation of uh, NFA laws and I'm sure a host of other laws too. Uh, now, you know, obviously it's speculation whether uh, whether the thing would even work in a gun and also whether Amazon was involved. But people did make the point that Amazon is, um, is well in control of the items, even on the third-party marketplace 
uh, for for the things that come on their side and, and they sell. I mean, I think they scrutinize them probably pretty well. So it was a fascinating deal to come across. And uh, obviously, um, Twitter and, and Facebook and Firearm Blog and all these things blew up pretty quick and were saying, you know, obviously don't go out there, don't even look at that that page, don't buy it or anything like that uh, on the off chance that, uh, that it's actually uh, legitimately going to make your gun a fully automatic firearm. So I thought that was a fascinating deal. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, like we all can agree on, Amazon and eBay have been trying to kill gun stuff for quite a while. Uh, I mean, they carry sights and holsters and stuff like that, but you know, the, uh, Amazon, the guy who owns Amazon is, you know, an anti-gun guy. I mean, it's, you know, it's been proven many times. So, and I mean, you know, you kind of look at it this way. It's, he owns the company, he can do what he wants, but to set up his own purchasers or customers, that's ridiculous. And, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm not an attorney, but I look at that as entrapment uh, because they're advertising it as airsoft. Mm -hmm. They're not saying, hey, this is for your Glock. They're saying this is for your airsoft gun. So what if a 19-year-old airsoft kid, you know, that really doesn't know gun guns, what if he just says, hey, I'll buy one. And then all of a sudden he gets it in the mail and he's just, you know, he's dumb for buying it, but he really truly doesn't know. I mean, I that's entrapment. That. You're just setting up your own damn customers. And to also give your customer base to the ATF, you know, that's not right either. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I mean, as, as a private in, a private businessman, um, you know, I don't like the fact that he is uh, operating outside of that idea. He's actually in cahoots with government and having them basically, or actually using his uh, forum, Amazon, to round up what is appearing to be supposed criminals when like big johnson said these could be just innocent people who don't know any better and buying a product but um you know but but again is it a surprise probably not i mean the guy's worth billions of dollars uh, i'm sure he has his hand in probably everything with the government and so as a result why not you know he's an anti-gun uh, person why not push his agenda i mean you know you have um uh, Mayor Mike Bloomberg or ex Mike Bloomberg, uh, who does the same things. He basically funds all of these groups to go out there and preach about anti-gun violence and all this other stuff. And yet, um, fortunately he's been unsuccessful to an extent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so interesting stuff. I don't know if anything else will come of it. Um, and, and we had a couple of people make some, make some good points. CWB, uh, was saying, damn it. I love Amazon prime bastards. Um, uh, and I totally agree. In fact, um, you know, you can still get a lot of holsters and, and some gun parts and such on Amazon. It can be a pretty good resource, especially if you have Amazon prime taking advantage of, you know, the two day shipping and all that kind of stuff. I definitely do. Um, so it's on it, if, if, and obviously this is all speculation, but if for some reason this is actually true, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty frustrating that, uh, that this could potentially be happening, but it's kind of one of those examples or it serves us all, um, a good lesson to make sure that we're, um, I guess in some way hyper aware uh, mm -hmm. and making sure that we're thinking and we're very thoughtful about, uh, making purchases. I had an example, um, I was trying to sell a firearm through, uh, arms list. And uh, I had a gentleman contact me, and uh, I very well spoken, uh, knew exactly what he wanted, um, knew about the gun, uh, was agreeable to the price. And I made a mistake of not asking uh, what state he was from. And, and we ended up meeting down the street at Bass Pro Shop, and he pulls up in a, uh, in a, in a motor home, and I saw a Texas uh, license plate on it. And, of course, the first question I asked when he gets out, again, he was a very nice guy, I said, where are you from? Because he mentioned he was coming from Wichita. I made the assumption he was from Wichita. Um, and he said, well, I'm from uh, Washington State. He had just bought that uh, trailer in Texas. And he showed me his concealed carry from Washington State. And he said, I was in uh, Wichita and I was talking with a, a guy at a gun store there. And he said, as long as you have your concealed carry uh, from any state, you can buy a firearm in, uh, in Kansas, which is 100% not true. Uh, that is absolutely not the case. I don't think you can buy a uh, handgun across state lines. I think anywhere in the country, if I'm not mistaken, certainly not in Kansas. And uh, uh, so that was a, that was kind of a, kind of an interesting deal. And it was my, my fault for not screening him a little bit better and asking if he was a Kansas resident because it would have saved me time and it would have saved him time. Again, we both had a laugh and he was a nice guy about it uh, and he went on, on his way, but, uh, but it was an interesting deal. And of course it could have been a sting, 
you never know. Yeah, uh, right. So it, you always want to be very, very careful. And if you want to keep your CCL license, don't do anything stupid. <laughs> yep. That is true. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Crazy Scottsman saying 100% false. You have to buy a handgun in a state you reside in. Right. Well, I wonder if Crazy Scottsman, I mean, you can buy, you know, a handgun in another state, but then it has to be shipped to your FFL and you have to pick it up in that state or that you live in. You can't just hand it to somebody in a parking lot. Right. Now, I know that rifles and shotguns are different, but with a pistol, I've never, you know, bought one in a different state, never been able to. I wanted to, but never been able to. Right, right. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, it looks like everybody's basically in agreement. Uh, yeah. With- yeah, you can ship. I knew that, but you can't, <laughs> you can't just go in and buy one. Matter of fact, I, uh, I sent, uh, I sent the guys here a picture of it and I'm in Oklahoma this week and they actually have a used CZ Ramey. Uh, and it was 395 bucks. <laughs> That is an awesome deal, and I wanted that thing so bad. But by the time I ship it back to Texas, pay the FFL, I mean, I'm looking at another fifty bucks plus. So I was like, man, eh, I don't want to mess with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Seventeen. Anything? Anything to add to that? Uh, no, not really. Um, no. <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, you know, in where I live, it's very difficult to find guns of choice. You know, there tends to be a lot of the same old crap, um, you know, Glocks. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm using the word crap liberally, but, uh, you know, like Glock, Smith & Wesson, um, you know, you find a ton of uh, Kimber 1911s, uh, but you don't find anything else. You know, you can't find a Steyr around me. You can't find a CZ around me. So a lot of times you got to go elsewhere, you know, and, uh, you know, I think the gun laws are just crazy. You know, you're like, oh, you can't cross state lines by a pistol, but you can go and buy a a rifle or a shotgun, you know, like where's the sensibility in that? I don't know. But, well, yeah, whatever. like I've always said that, you know, I, uh, I can come to Oklahoma and I can buy an AR with a, you know, 60 round drum and walk out the door with ammo, but I can't buy a pistol that holds 17 rounds. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And then Dan, Danny's saying he bought his PPQ out of state, right? You, you buy it out of state, but you cannot leave the state with it. It has to be transferred back to your home state. You can't walk out the door with it. Oh, right. You right. can't walk out the door with it, yeah. Yeah. Danny's got uh, the PPQ and OD Green. I got one, too. I like it. Nice. Mateo was saying he bought a, a, a used, unfired Smith & Wesson Sigma for $179 wow. uh, this week. Cool. Cool. Sigma. The, the Sigma was uh, kind of the the original m and if I'm not mistaken, that was very Glock-like. In fact, it was that the one that Glock sued Smith & Wesson for? Yeah, it's the original SDV9E or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's the one they got the lawsuits and the copyright infringement on. Yep. So uh, 7 of 3 Down is asking a great question. Uh, anybody excited about the m 2.0 Compact? <clears throat> uh, what do you guys think? Uh, I will be once I get my full size and fire it and see how well it does. I know that yeah. KS wasn't real big on it, um, but he, you know he he won't admit it. But he's a damn Glock fanboy, so uh, you know um, for me I'm I'm kind of excited to get the full size. Um, but you know if it if it shoots well, if I like it, I could see myself getting the compact. I mean it's the perfect size, Glock 19 size. I think that's yeah. great. And I agree with Scab Ugly. You know they're all still better than Glock. But no, I mean, m and I mean, I think that, you know, like we've all agreed that the, you know, I mean, I know for the Shield 45, you know, the 2.0 version of that, um, I like the trigger a lot better and I like the stippling and, you know, I think it's, I think it definitely has a place, you know, been pushing for that forever to have a Glock 19 size and they finally do have it. Right. And uh, I think it's going to do well for them. I really do. Yeah. I, I mean, think- am I going to run out and buy it? Probably not because I have the 9C and it's so close, um, you know, where I can run the 12 round or the full size round or, um, capacity. So I don't know. I mean, I've already got that gun set up like I wanted. I, I would probably still maybe put an apex trigger uh, in that one. But, you know, hell, maybe they even did a better trigger on it than the 2.0s that came out before. So who knows? All right. I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how it looks and how it shoots and how it handles. But I, I think it's I think it's going to do well because I, I still think that uh, Glock didn't really you know I don't know deliver I guess. Knock it out of the park. 
So. Um, Mar Ice uh, was saying that the M and P and the, the P three twenty are both leaps and bounds over the Glock. Um, I'm kind of glad you said that. Uh, Seventeen seventy six and I were talking a little bit about P three twenty a little bit earlier today. Not only talking about um, we haven't heard anything from Sig yet. Uh, on this whole trigger uh, shenanigans thing, but uh, I was also expressing some frustration that uh, I had this P320 uh, RX and I like the gun. I think it's a good gun, but I feel like I can't do anything with it right now. I can't put it on any videos or anything because I'm going to have everyone and their grandmother immediately putting a comment on the video that says, you know, if you drop it, it'll go off or, or you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, or you're, you're, an unsafe, right you're an unsafe douche because you're using a gun that's going to explode in your hand or whatever right. it is will say and uh, I think that's really unfortunate because it's still a good it's still a good a good gun and, and part of me just wants to put it back on video just because I don't know yeah I mean I, I think, love this I love the sick p320 like it's yeah. a great gun yeah. yeah and I think the problem is too is that um, you know when they when they dropped it the way they dropped it it failed supposedly and, and again I'm only going by what the story said but at the same time, how many guns are actually tested that way? So far, as far as I know, none. Yeah. So how do we know if all these guns are actually drop safe? Now, of course, you can look at the trigger and the dingus and all that and say, well, if the dingus isn't depressed, then the trigger won't also be depressed, which makes sense. You know, and when you yeah. think about it, what there are not many triggers on striker-fired handguns that I can think of um, that are solid triggers. So you got the 320, um, you know, the P99, but that's, you know, depending on how you have it double or single action you've got the um the m and p but it has that pivot in the middle yeah. uh the bursa bp9 has a, a solid trigger so you know maybe maybe you know it's um something that just hasn't been recognized i don't know but uh i think the biggest disappointment is you know sig has gone dark you know we haven't heard anything nothing at yeah. all you know they produced that video which whether or not that was a legit video or not or if it was just for marketing where they were dropping the gun over and over again and whatever. And I know a lot of people critique the video, but at the same time, it, it's re really odd. It's, they've just gone completely dark with any information for, for yeah. the people. So. We do have a question uh, real quick before it gets past, or it's already gotten past, but I've held it. Uh, Danny B. Fishing, it says, rank the m &P Shield, the Glock 43, and the Walter PPS M2. He shot all three, but wants our thoughts. He's buying one of them soon. Hmm. Shield 43 and PPS. Okay, as I know you've had all three. I've only had two of the three. So what are your thoughts? Um, that's a little bit tough. Um, it, it, the, uh, it, it's tough, and, and here's why. The, the PPS M2 is the first one, without question. Um, I shoot that better than the other two. It feels good in the hand. Uh, for the money, I think it's a great gun. Um, it even get, has pretty good sights. The, the glowy sights, they're not the best, but they're good and their steel. Um, but then between the 43 and the shield, it's tough because I think I shoot the shield a little bit better. It feels pretty good in the hand, but um, I can take apart a Glock and I can throw all sorts of crap in it and and uh, and modify it, tune it uh, to be more comfortable to me so I can shoot it a little bit better. So uh, that one's really tough. Although if you put a, a proverbial gun to my head, it would be the PPSM2, the Glock 43, then the shield. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, 17. Uh, you know, I've never had the Glock 43. I never really had any interest in it. Um, you know, I've had the shield. I've had actually a couple of shields and a couple of PPSs. <laughs> and um, I have no longer any shields, and I only have a PPS. I just think ergonomically it's a better gun. Trigger-wise, it's a better gun, and it just shoots, in my opinion, a little bit better. Um, now, in my opinion, I have shot the Glock 43. I own the shield, and I have shot KS's PPS. Uh, I don't have a lot of trigger time behind the PPS, but I have over 3,000 rounds through my shield 9mm, and I've shot the 43, and the 43 is way too tiny for my hand, uh, and of course I don't like the grip angle, but aside from the grip, grip angle, I think it's a little snappier, uh, probably because it's lighter. Uh, I shoot the shield great, I love the shield, and then I shot KS's PPS, um, only ran two mags through it and it's a great gun. Um, however, I'm so used to my shield. I would, I personally would pick the shield. Just, I'm, I'm probably biased to it. I don't have enough trigger time, but of course I love Walter. I mean, they're great guns. So I think, you know, it's whichever one you are going to shoot the best is what I would say, you know, go, he said he shot all of them. You know, uh, Danny, what was your, 
opinion, which one did you shoot the best? That's what it's going to come down to since you've shot all of them. Right. Hey, um, we do have another question, Pistol Pete, and I'm glad you asked this question. Uh, it was uh, it was it was a topic plan for tonight. Uh, if the Share Act, um, or in this case, uh, um, which includes the uh, uh, the Hearing Protection Act, uh, passes, will anybody be picking up suppressors? And he said, uh, minus 1776. No offense, buddy. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, so this goes to Big Johnson or anybody else out there. Um, well, you know that I've got five suppressor ready guns. So yes, I definitely will be, um, you know, I have, uh, well, I have another, uh, thing that never mind. I won't get into that. We don't need to talk about that thing, but I can shoot something on them right now, but, uh, yes, I will be picking up suppressors. All right. Um, I, so scab is saying, hell yes. Okay. Um, uh, we'll kind of see how that runs for a little while for me. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I love the idea of them. I think they're really cool and maybe perhaps at some point, um, uh, but, uh, but I, it's not a real, not a real priority. Plus they're expensive. And I think once this act passes, they're going to get go. expensive. Well, and here, here's the thing. The uh, suppressor companies are now going to have to pay the same uh, tax or whatever it is that gun companies pay. And I don't know if it's like a 10% uh, uh, fee or whatever it is that gun companies are currently paying now, but that means that their price out the door is going to be more expensive. So I assume that we're going to also uh, have that burden as well. Um, something yeah. to kind of keep in mind. I think it's going to be more, it's going to be, a little freer in the marketplace for the pricing and maybe for new companies to come in or create a better pricing for the uh, suppressors. And you're going to have grades. You're going to have a lower grade, a medium grade, and a high grade. We all know that, but at least you'll have better options. Um, Swinger has a question or he has a comment. He said he prefers his XDS 45 over the shield. Now I'm wondering if he's talking about the shield 45 or a shield nine millimeter because I've shot the XDS 45 a lot and I've shot my 45 shield and I prefer the 45 shield. What's your opinion, KS? Um, I'd go the, the shield all day long. Uh, for whatever reason, I think that's a fantastic small uh, 45 and I agree. And even though I have very little experience with the XDS 45, I've shot it a couple of times. It, uh, it was a little on the snappy side for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that's, that's, that was my opinion also. And just so everybody knows, per revolver, fuck Springfield. <laughs> I saw that. Um, yeah, okay, Paradox is saying, KS, scratch the Hudson off the list and add the suppressor. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, I, I had to laugh with him on that. Um, I, in all seriousness, uh, I've thought about that a little bit, um, and it's all about timing. It's all about whether I have any... Uh, gun money, so to speak, that's available at the time because I still am interested in the Hudson. I mean, I, you know, I still look back at the pictures and some of the videos from SHOT Show at the beginning of the year, and um, I, I am still extraordinarily intrigued. However, it's going to be a 1000 to $1,200 gun, and uh, and obviously that's, that's a lot of money. That's two or three <laughs> other guns um, or other things, and so I, I don't know yet. No promises there. I will see what happens. Yeah, and then uh, Young Guns has a question. Um, are lock grips as good as VZ or Hogue? Um, what's your opinion, 17? Um, uh, they're good. I mean, I don't, I don't think there are, you know, they're any better or worse than VZ grips. I had VZ grips on my old CZP01, and I like them. I had the same pattern, the frag pattern. Actually, I have my CZP01 out. And I would tell you that I think the frag pattern on the VZ are a little bit more aggressive than on the lock grips. With that being said, uh, you know, it's really, I mean, you're you're really picking at hairs right here, you know, because there's really no difference. Um, I think Locke makes good stuff. You know, they're thin, comfortable. Uh, they do what they're supposed to do. And um, I like how he has a lot of different colors that you can add. But, um, you know, pick your poison because they're both really good. And now I've had the VZ and I've had the lock grips. And I prefer the lock grips for the fit. Uh, right at the corner of one of my CZs on my BZ, I actually had a, a gap 
where it was due to the, I guess, where they trimmed it. And I thought, well, it's, you know, maybe they just didn't cut the one side correctly, but it was actually on the other side too. It was just a very small gap, but, you know, just the attention to detail that I've noticed with all the lock grips that I have, they just seem to fit better. Um, just in my opinion, you know, other people may vary. Uh, and there's more of a choice of texture. You know, you can get the golf ball pattern and get, I mean, really super aggressive or all the way down to his new carry edition where they're really not aggressive at all and they won't scratch your back. But none of them really scratch me or bother me. But I know Mateo has had a ton of them too. Uh, so he could actually give his opinion. Yeah, okay. Mateo's agreeing that lock grips are fantastic. So, yeah, he's a lock grip fan too. I'm, I'm wow. going to – I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in things here a little bit uh, of all the grips that I've ever tried. And, and the only lock grips I've ever tried uh, admittedly are, are yours, big Johnson. Uh, I think on your SPO one, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, the orange one, uh, yeah. the orange ones, which I liked and they were certainly comfortable. I've had quite a few VZ grips on 1911s over the years. However, the best grips I've ever held hands down bar none uh, were actually the, uh, the whole G10 grips on the, uh, on the Legion P226 and 229. Those are nice. unbelievable grips, but they are they are basically exclusive to the uh, the Legion. You can get pretty close. Hogue has some other ones, but they're not the same. Yeah, yeah. And I have held them on a Legion, and they are very nice too. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, Swinger purchased a a Keltec Gen Two sub uh, sub two K in forty caliber three weeks ago. He's been having a lot of fun uh, with that. Has anybody else had any experience with a, a sub two thousand? Uh, I have not, but remember when I was there with you, I could have bought one <laughs> for the uh, Glock mags for a really great price. Yeah. Yeah. So, those what about you? Are illegal here? <laughs> oh, are you serious? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Even with a ten round mag? Mm -hmm. Because they're collapsible. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. So if you wrap some electrical tape around it so they won't collapse, is it fine then? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want you to try that. Come on up here and try it. All right. So in fact, why don't you, uh, when you do it, walk into a bank, post office, or police station and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. That'll be the end of you. You're going to be somebody's boyfriend. I, I'm going to tell them I'm 1776 robust. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Yeah, Kimbers are nice pistols. Um, Keenan is is – saying that, you know, I guess he's telling Logan, yeah, Kimber, Kimber are nice pistols. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of funny, you know, you guys are talking about 1911s. I actually uh, uh, texted both these boys here and uh, I texted them the picture, this picture of a, um, uh, what was it? A 1911 made by uh, Metro Arms. It was like an, called the American Classic. Right. And it was actually really nice. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not a 1911 guy and I will not spend a lot of money if I ever went to get a 1911. And it was about six hundred bucks, but it was all it was all chromed out. It was really nice, and uh, you know, I, again, I talked myself off that bridge, but um, you know, I thought about it for a minute. You know, it was really nice. You know, for a forty-five and nineteen eleven, it was it held nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, nineteen elevens. I mean, I still love nineteen elevens. Um, you know, and I think KS does too. Um, they have their place. You know, and I mean. Now that I've been doing this competition shooting, you know, the 2011s are, I mean, now, you know, the higher, they're higher end, but man, they're really, they're awesome too, but they're definitely pricey. Yeah. Uh, CWB, the Colt Commander, great gun. Just, uh, just kind of a, a thought there. Um, the red and black dog asked if anybody's uh, fired the new Kimber revolver. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I have not. However, uh, Centerfire down the street from me just got a couple in a few weeks ago, they may have actually sold them uh, by now. I'm not really sure, but I, I held it. And, and you guys know I'm not a revolver expert. Don't claim to be. Um, I've owned a couple over the years, but they were just kind of run of the mill J frames, whatever. Um, but, uh, but I like the, the, uh, the cylinder. I mean, it, it looked very good, but I, revolvers don't feel very good in my hand. Um, so, yeah. I, and, and that's all revolvers. It's not the Kimber, but I got to say that's a good looking revolver. It really is. I actually put my hands on it today at Cops in Oklahoma City, and literally, and I know that you've put your hands on it, I could only get two fingers on the grip. That's all I could fit on there. The rest had to hang off. And I mean, the sight, at least it has a rear sight, but it's a very short radius, uh, but it was $850. Yeah, and I was like, what? 
It shoots gold. Yeah, and I'm like, uh, thanks, but, you know, yeah. And I've got four revolvers, and they just sit in the safe. You know, just not a wheel gun guy myself. 17, what do you think? Uh, I, I have no desire for a revolver. None. Okay. None. Unless, unless there was nothing else available. But I, I just, you know, they're not just not for me. Cer certain guns you kind of know. You know, I think everybody even who's watching this realizes that there are just certain either brands of guns or types of guns that you have no desire in. And um, I just don't have any for a revolver. You know, I just don't find them to be interesting, you know. But that's me. Everybody's yeah. different. Yeah. Hey, uh, Logan's got a question for everybody out there as well as the guys in the panel. Uh, question for all, which is better, 10 millimeter or 45 ACP? Ooh. Discuss. Uh, okay. Well, Go ahead. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you tell me. I don't know. I, I'm I'm a nine millimeter guy usually. Uh, if I could choose another caliber, I'd go with a forty five. Something there's just something you know manly about a forty five <laughs> or ten millimeters. Well, I mean, good too, but if you're look, you have to look at it in a different couple of perspectives. Um, ten millimeter, you know, is faster. You're going to get more capacity than a forty five. Um, you know, but it's. 10 millimeter ammo is more expensive than 45 unless you can reload it or you've got some sort of connection. And I, and it's it's also not as available in some places. I can go in some places and they don't have any 10 millimeter, but they have tons of 45. So, I mean, I love a 45 and I've shot 10 millimeter and, you know, everybody's like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, has all this knockdown power. I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be whatever that person prefers. Yeah, I, I got to <laughs> I have to ask a really dumb question. What is that? I have no idea. That's weird. Um, you said that uh, there's more capacity in a 10 millimeter than a 45. Yeah. On the, uh, well, just think about, well, like on a tan folio, you can get 15 rounds because it's, it's, it's about the same size as a 40 caliber, just a little bit bigger. Uh, and then on the 45, it's a lot larger around. So usually you can get 10 rounds in a 45 where you could get 15. In a um, in a ten millimeter, yeah, they're not the same size. Interesting. I didn't think there was that significant of a difference. Uh, Pops is suggesting a fifteen millimeter. It's a good way to go. Yeah, I said seventy three millimeter. It's uh, that's a lot too, for sure. Probably too much in New York. It's a big round, big round. There you go. Um, Let's see, you know, I mean, getting back to the revolver thing really quick, you know, if we lived in the days of like cowboys again, I would totally have a revolver, two of them actually on both hips, but nah, not for me. Maybe in my boot. That's about it. Scab Ugly says knockdown power is a myth. What? You mean like if, if you shoot somebody with a 45 and they'll just fly across the car like in the movies and you don't even move? I don't understand that. <laughs> Uh, what else is going on out here? Let's see. <laughs> what are you guys measuring out there? Okay. Wait, we're not measuring length. Huh? Yeah, we're not going to go there. Yeah. Pop and pop wants to talk about the girth. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's retracting that. Wait a minute. Uh, so 10 millimeter is just uh, 357 in a semi-auto. Okay, Mateo, that that helps me visualize it a little bit better. I appreciate that. I really was thinking it was a little bit uh, a little chunkier than that. Apparently, not. you know. Uh, can I just bring up really quick something about the uh, the PPQ? Sure, it's your first time. Ever. Um, you know, curious, just curious about this. Have we seen? the end of this gun. And what I mean by that is if you notice, there's not a lot of uh, attention being paid on it. So I wonder if um, in the process of Walther cleaning out their storehouses of uh, PPQs, did they maybe uh, make a miscalculation by flooding the market and now losing interest in the grand PPQ? Uh, you know, I'm very curious about that because again, it's fantastic firearm. Um, you know, there was uh, some videos out there right now uh, from- um, Oh, I got oh just picked up one. What's that? Poe po Performance. Yeah, Poe Performance. That's who I was trying to, to remember. Yeah. So he just uh, did a series of videos on it, and um, you know, he liked it. He had some issues with the sights, which I, I always say they're terrible, uh, plastic sights. But you know, I wonder if we're, we're moving past the PBQ. It's almost as if I wonder if it's gotten yeah. too long in the tooth, so to speak. 
it probably needs a refresh, but it's a great pistol. And I don't, I don't think that anybody probably, you know, you got to look at it this way too. It's what's the next gun. Most people probably, if they were going to get a PPQ like yourself, me, you know, it, if they, it, they've probably already gotten the PPQ. So now they're on to something bigger and better. Yeah. You know, you're going to have some people who haven't bought one yet, but they're, you know, I mean, I think it's now on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, I'm that's hoping what that uh, Walter will put out a refresh uh, this year, you know, but uh, who knows what yeah. they got in store for everybody. Um, and yes, by the way, Revolver, this is uh, a gray tungsten gray PPQ. It's like one of only like, I don't know, two, like 3000 that were made or something like that. And I got yeah. one. Pistol Pete is saying put a threaded barrel on the PPQ and drop a suppressor on it. Yeah, you can actually just buy the Navy edition and you're good to go. Yeah, if it was legal, I could do it. Unfortunately, you can't. It's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I too have been noticing that the PPQ is sort of dropping off the uh, map a little bit. Uh, we, were, we were talking about that earlier today and uh, uh, not many people are talking about it anymore. I, I was teasing Poe about it actually a little bit and he, he kind of chuckled and said he has better late than never. Uh, but I mean, it's still a great gun. It, it absolutely is. And I think the PPQ helps set the stage for other manufacturers to sit up and take notice about trigger design a little bit more because uh, PPQ, whatever it was three three years ago, whenever it came out, um, uh, people were, I, God, they were losing it over that trigger and, and rightly so. It's a fantastic trigger. So um, some other uh, manufacturers said, oh, you know, P the PPQ has got something there. We need to start dialing ours in. Well, it's yeah. interesting because, you know, the trigger on the PPQ, you know, because I had a P99 at one time, and, and let me tell you, that single action on the P99, I would tell you, is better than this one. Um, it was just just a little bit shorter on the reset and probably a little crisper than than the P9 or the PPQ's trigger. You know, obviously, the P99 is, um, they're still selling it, but, you know, you can't find those anywhere anymore unless you order it directly somehow through Walther. But uh, I would say somewhere on the horizon, we'll see something come out that will probably rejuvenate Walther's um, great gun. I mean, this is the this is their best gun by far. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Swinger 70 said, his local gun shop just got a shipment of the Mossberg shockwaves. I was thinking about one for home defense piece. Any opinions? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, I honestly, dude, I would just get a regular shotgun with a collapsible stock so that it's maneuverable inside the house and you can handle the recoil better. Yeah, or even, you know, like a 14-inch barrel shotgun, something like that. I mean, they, they make them relatively small. I, I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with the shockwave, uh, but it uh, I, I imagine in the, in the dead of the night, if you're just waking up, that might be um, to make sure you've got the right grip on it and everything so it doesn't become a bucking bronco might be a little bit of a challenge, just a thought. Yeah, and I actually ordered one you know, until I found out that our Texas, uh, you know, shockwave law hadn't gone into effect. It is now, so I could go buy one now. But, you know, I started thinking about it more and more. And, you know, you get into an 18-inch shotgun, you know, with the, with the buttstock on it, you know, rather than having to shoot it like this, you know, you can just stick it on your shoulder and shoot it. Um, I, I decided to pass on it. I figured it was more of a novelty, and it would probably get – kind of tiring or, you know, just kind of get tired quickly and not as usable. And I even saw some tests where they took the shockwave 12 gauge with the same, uh, you know, load in it and then shot it against an 18 inch uh, barrel shotgun and the groups were better, uh, more controllable, you know, and I was just like, man, that's kind of what I thought. So I decided to pass on it. Uh, Pops makes a good point. Okay, Pops makes a good point. Uh, it's a gimmick, um, and I'm assuming you're still talking about the shockwave. And if that if that's the case, I, I would say that's probably true. It was probably a little bit gimmicky, kind of a marketing thing. Yeah, I agree. And with it, that. I mean, it's neat. You know, you can stick in a little side saddle, and you know, it could. You know, if you want to use it as a truck gun or something like that. But I don't know. I just don't see a huge application for it. Where an 18 inch shotgun, you know, would fill the gap better, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah. So, yeah, Mateo says the 12 gauge firearm is of no interest to him. And I know that Bald and Curious loves one. <laughs> he has one. He likes it. Uh, let's see here. There was 
Oh, the the Keltec. Uh, there is a, I think, uh, the KSG. Yeah, Pops was saying the KSG uh, Keltec or something like that. Isn't that that? Uh, doesn't it have the rotating um, uh, uh, tubes in it? I guess something like that, or two sets of tubes. It's yeah. like a fourteen shot shotgun, and it's yeah, kind, that's, of bull, kind of a bullpup design. That's badass. Yeah. Yeah, that that that's really cool. I think it holds yeah. like twelve. I think. Yeah, and now that might be a little bit better for home defense. It would certainly scare the crap out of the person if they saw it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty cool. And, you know, you can even put the Aguila short shells in it, and I think somebody loaded it like 30 shells or something. It was something crazy. And, I mean, they were just busting off buckshot. So. And Scab is saying the 12-gauge is the most versatile gun on the planet. Yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff with it, that's for sure. Um, all right, we do it. Uh, gun check. 17, what do you got? 50 guns laying on the desk, probably. No, just this one right here. PPQ. What you got, KS? Well, I mean, I've got some guns on the desk here. Uh, what you sure. got? And, and, and so the, the exciting one right now, and, and it is unloaded, just so you know. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. But, uh, but I got kind of curious about a, a, ported, uh, a ported barrel uh, Glock. Now, I understand this does not have the, the ported barrel actually in it right now. It's got the silver barrel because I think that's kind of cool looking. Uh, but at the range, I'll be testing it with, uh, with the actual ported barrel. I kind of want to put some things to the test. I, I, I'm a little bit of a skeptic, and uh, and uh, I've seen videos over the years of people uh, testing the ported barrel and, and how much flatter the gun is and everything, and perhaps that is true. I, could, I, I mean, it absolutely could be true. However, I've never done it for myself. Um, the only ported barrel gun I've ever shot is a Smith & Wesson Performance Center shield, and that does not count because it's, it's too small. Yeah. You can't really gauge on something like that. But I think with a Glock 19 with a 9mm in it, uh, right next to another Glock 19 uh, standard uh, to be able to do a little bit of comparison. And it's more for me. I mean, I, I will probably film it and do a video. Maybe. I, I don't know yet. But I am really curious myself. And everybody at the range uh, said the same thing because no, nobody's actually shot one of these yet. So I'm uh, kind of excited to give that a whirl. So that's kind of the, the, uh, the gun check on the table of excitement. Cool. Here's my gun check. PO9, uh, 21 in the mag, one in the pipe. So that is what I've been carrying all week and loving the pistol. Got the Mid-Atlantic holster, 29 bucks. Can't beat that. Great holster. And that is what I'm carrying. Um, Big Daddy's got his PCR, Humble Marksman, 75B inside waistband. Uh, Cajun Tiger has his Cajun Gunwork PCR. Uh, Mateo's got his Steyr L40. Um, let's see. Uh, Shep has his VP9 SK. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Insight Freedom has his P07 and his P238. CWB has his P320 uh, subcompact. Uh, let's see. Rich has his P01. Uh, and Keenan has his G27. I carry my revolver in single action, has a Glock 19. <laughs> I don't know where the revolver is. Come on. Uh, Beretta, or let's see, Jesus is God has his Beretta 380 and his Wyndham Weaponry, Weaponry AR-15. Uh, Young Guns has his CZ SP-01 Phantom. Um, let's see, Finger Lakes Pepper XD-40, Philip Harper PPQ, Mar has his P320 and 40, Al Osborne has his FNS 9C, Scab 9C, Ball and Curious LPC, or LCP-2 in his glove box. That didn't. Put that in your pocket. Uh, Swinger has XDS 45. Captain G43. Uh, PGH fan has a CZP01. Pops Quest has a CZP10. Um, and 7up G43 with his plus two and his comp. Hey, really, really quick to Young Guns. He said he had a Phantom. How do you like that gun, Young Guns? I've been looking at one of those myself. If it's the Generation 2, ask him if it's a. Well, we want to know if it's a generation two. I looked at another one today. Well, the only difference between the Gen One and Gen Two is the polymer, right? No, they changed the width and also the slide is a little shorter. You sure about that? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely narrower. Um, 
thought they modeled, I thought they modeled it as after the SP01. It is no, it's, it the SP01. Plan. It's a polymer frame, but um, I was not aware that they thinned the gun and down. I mean, it's basically the same exact gun it was in Gen One. The only difference is they changed the polymer. That's all I thought that they actually made it with a rigid, more rigid polymer like the PO9 and PO7s had. Well, that's what I thought originally until I put my hands on it. And uh, I know that uh, Humble Marksman has put his hands on it too, and they they did a change on it. It definitely feels different. Hmm. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's you know, it's a great pistol. I mean, um, but man, they were one six fifty for it. <laughs> that, yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, and I was just like, man, the PO nine is a great pistol in my opinion. Now, of course, it takes the CZ seventy five mags, which the PO nine doesn't. But. Right. Okay, so the SPO one has a skeletonized slide, basically. Uh, yeah. Phantom. That makes sense. I, I don't think they. I don't think they really change very much else. Because it sure feels different. Yeah. When you say when you say skeletonized slide, what do you mean by that? I think so. they bent out. They milled out the top of the slide a little bit more. I did notice that on the Phantom. Um, it does have a, a, a more of a whatever indention on the top of the slide, yeah. but that, that was the only thing I noticed. Yeah, he said they lowered the weight a lot. Right. Yeah, That's like twenty-seven right. ounces unloaded. Yeah, because it definitely when you grab the top of the slide, it's it seems really skinny to me. Hmm. But you know whatever. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 27 ounces. That's pretty damn light. Mm -hmm. Unloaded. Uh, let's see here. Pops has his AK-47. Well done. Yeah, they knocked down the top corners of the slide all the way back to the cocking serrations. Hmm. Yeah, no front cocking serrations. I noticed that because I was trying to rack it from the front. I was like, where the hell did that go? So between the, the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, there's no front serrations? Yeah, there's none. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. It just it feels different when because I was trying to rack it from the top, and it definitely feels like it's – I don't know if it's sunk. It, it just seems really thin and like it's sunk farther down in there. I don't know if it is or not. but. Uh, oh, did, uh, Red Dog's asking, did you get the updates on your Strike B? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did actually. And, uh, I said I wasn't going to buy it. What's the but, updates? Uh, the update is that I bought it and, uh, it should be, uh, <laughs> it should be here by November, saying November. So, so the updates were, Hey, now you have to pay for it. Is that what the update was? Pretty much. Yeah. Pay for okay. it. Pay for it. If you want to get it, because supposedly they're going to have them to the distributors in October then the, distribu the distributors have to do whatever they do, and then they should be shipping uh, like the end of October, first week of November. Yeah, okay. Red and Black Dog said uh, he saw November 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see how you like it. Yeah, so am I. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, what do you guys think about carrying full metal jacket in the winter time? Uh, to me, it makes absolutely no difference, at least in this area of the country, although it gets cold, um, you you can still shoot a person. I hate to say this out loud. You can still shoot a person with a hollow point. Um, I, I mean, you know, it, it's the, they're, they're going to do relatively close to the same job. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion, it depends on the ammo. I mean, it depends on the uh, the type of of gun you're using, meaning like if it's a 380 or a 9 millimeter or a 45. Um, in a 380, you know, if somebody's wrapped up in a big bundle, we talked about this last time, uh, if they're wrapped up pretty well, I would recommend going full metal jacket on a 380 because, you know, just with deeper penetration, I don't care if I go through their back, you know, I want it in there, but that's just my opinion. And that's all, that's just my opinion. Yeah. Pops makes a great point. 30 extra days for me to get my gun. He's absolutely right. So I'll have it by December guys. Sweet. <laughs> So lucky. Um, all right. It's uh, it's just about that time. Gentlemen, you guys want to uh, talk about anything coming up at all and uh, say your uh, howdy do's? Go ahead. Go ahead. Gord head. Um, well, I uh, ordered a thousand rounds of Hellfire ammo, uh, reman ammo. So I've got that coming in. Um, I we kind of 
you know, I know that 7-Up's been testing it, and I ran it in my tan folio this weekend a little bit to see if it would work, and it ran fine. So, and hell, that stuff is shipped to my house was coming out to $7.75, basically a 50-round box. And that's a really damn good price. Mm -hmm. um, and got some holsters coming in and some other stuff. And that's about all I have going on. Yeah, I don't have much going on. I mean, it's for me, it's just a big damn waiting game. You know, every, if I get a gun, I got to wait and then wait and then wait again. Um, and it's sort of like in limbo right now with the Steyr and the damn m and um, I got a, a new belt from Core Essentials. They sent me their tactical belt. So it's kind of like the same, um, you know, ratchet system with the belt buckle, but it's with a, a nylon fabric with a piece of like polymer in between it it's actually really nice um so i'm gonna wear that for a bit and test it out um you know that's pretty much it i mean i'm i am like to go shooting with my new guns once those come in and then do a comparison and review but you know right now it's it's all up in the air so i'm i'm gonna be slowing down quite a bit so to speak okay fair enough fair enough uh, for me, a couple of things again, the, uh, uh, the ported Glock will be coming up before too long. However, before that, um, I am visiting the realm of six hour P229s. So that is also coming up. Just finished that, uh, as well. I'm excited for that because that's a brand new gun to the market. Very excited. <laughs> it's not, it's not at all, but uh, late to the party, but I love them. So I'm excited to do that. Uh, a couple of, uh, product view, uh, reviews coming up and then my first ammo review which will be really weird um, oh. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it and if it's gonna be any good because it's gonna be so not scientific whatsoever uh, mm. but uh, this is the ammo I was talking about a couple months ago uh, Fort Scott munitions and it, it really is extraordinarily good ammo but uh, I have no idea how I'm gonna get that across on film and to where people can understand uh, what I'm going through with it. So that'll be uh, quite a challenge and quite an adventure. So that's what's coming up there. But uh, again, we're kind of uh, coming to the end of this. So uh, so um, let's go ahead and uh, say our farewells. Um, I'll, I'll kick this one off. Everybody, thank you so much as always for joining us. This is a ton of fun. We have a great time with you guys. And uh, uh, this collective gets uh, just a little bit tighter uh, every every week, which is great. Although I see new faces almost every week too. So that's always exciting. And uh, we love hearing from you guys and learn more from you than uh, we could ever on our own. So we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah guys. We, go, go ahead. ahead. So, no, uh, uh, we go did. Ahead. We definitely, blah, blah, appreciate blah, 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 blah. <laughs> we definitely appreciate y'all joining us. Um, you know, if you haven't subbed to all three, please do. And uh, definitely, you know, thumbs up the chat. We appreciate it very much. And, um, you know, don't forget our gear on Abaddon Apparel. If you haven't checked that out, you know, we appreciate that too. And there's other YouTubers on there, such as the Humble Marksman, some other guys. Um, you know, we appreciate that. And, um, you know, we just appreciate the support so much. So that's what it's all about. You know, we have a great community here and we'd love to keep it rolling. Yeah, I agree with what these two guys said. Um, we appreciate everybody got it on here. Uh, I think I was only insulted once by the receding hairline comment that was made by one person named BB who never showed back up with his really intellectual comment that I need Rogaine. Wow, haven't heard that before. Um, <laughs> so I appreciate that. Um, but nonetheless, we appreciate you guys watching. Just, you know, stay tuned. I'm sure we'll come up with some interesting things to show you. And, uh, you know, try to keep it as real as possible. So thanks for watching. Yeah. And uh, two last things. Be sure to uh, stay tuned. Crazy Scotsman in a half an hour has the uh, the next uh, auction coming up or next drawing coming up. So uh, uh, head over to his channel. And also, I see that my parents have been on. We have two thumbs down. I appreciate that, Mom and Dad. <laughs> and... Um, uh, back to you. So, uh, so again, guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And we will see you next week. Later. I, I, thanks, I thanks everyone. Me? Carry on. Uh, Pop said I needed implants. Uh, I'd rather go with plugs. I hear they're better. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I look pretty good bald, Pops. I don't know what you would look like, but oof, man. Uh, yeah. But nonetheless, have a great night, guys. Appreciate you all watching. Thanks, all right, everyone. Later. See you. <laughs>